Uh, greetings. Um, I'm here to answer the YouTube Pagan Challenge for week number 13. The subject this week is divination. Uh, questions being, what kind of divination do I use and uh, why? Uh, what I feel about it, etc. Um, yes, I, uh, of course, uh, love this subject. I think this is a really interesting subject. And one of the reasons I think it's so interesting is because we have, even though some of us may share divination forms, I think most of us have different reasonings behind those forms, behind using the forms, what we use them for exactly, how we use them. So I'm really looking forward to reading everybody's answers this week. Yeah. I'm going to go uh, uh, a little backwards. <laughs> it was a little backwards. I had some notes here because I wanted to make sure that I, I uh, covered what I wanted to say. But um, I'm going to go approach the subject backwards and begin with something that I don't really use often, but something that I'm very interested in. And why? And that would be palmistry, the study of palms. Okay. Um, I almost didn't include this because for two reasons. Number one, like I said, I don't really use it as a form of divination. Um, and number two, uh, I don't know a lot about it. I know some things about it, uh, but I, I. And I will share what I do know about it in a, in a future video. I don't want to spend a lot of time on this video with that. But I will say that the reason that I was so interested in it and I wanted to include it here was um, my very first exposure to palmistry was when I was in college. And the in my dormitory, my freshman year dorm, um, the RA on the floor, the resident assistant who lived on the floor with us, uh, an upperclassman, she had a sign on her door, she read palms. And I was always so fascinated. I had some friends who had theirs read. I don't recall that I ever really had my palm read. I was a little shy about it, to be honest. I didn't know her, and at the time I really wasn't the kind of person who just go knocking on a door and say, hi, I'd like to have my palm read. But I was very interested. And I was so interested that I remember buying a book. And I have a book. I have the book today. Very, very old book. And it's very worn. <laughs> it's very well worn. Because over the years, I have gotten into the book and, and checked it out. Now, I want to go forward many, many years to, I want to say, uh, 15 years ago. Something like 15 years ago. My parents were visiting, something like that. My parents were visiting, and we took them to the Ren Fair, something to do. And my mother, who had to have been in her, she had to have been 80, she had to have been probably close to 80, never really had any interest in any kind of divination, never really. Um, she knew that I uh, did astrology, and she really wasn't even interested in that, really. Um, but she, we were with the family, and she decided she wanted to leave. She wanted to go off on her own, and that was really not like my mother at all. And I'm like, what is up? What are you doing? Why are you going off? And she said, well, she told me confidentially because she didn't want my father to hear that she wanted to have her palm read. She said she'd always wanted to have her palm read, and perhaps she would, would do that. So I went with her, and she had her palm read. And that renewed my interest. The reason I say that is it renewed my interest. And the reason it renewed my interest is I remember from time to time, you know, studying in my hands, the lines on my hands, I don't know that you can see, but they're very, they're very clear. Most of them are very clear. You can see very clearly what, um, what lines are, you know, you can find my lifeline easily, my heart line, my headline, etc. You can find them very, very simply. But what, I've, what I was interested in was I found out that the lines on your hands change. And as you, as you age, you know, as your experiences change, your experiences are reflected on in your hands. So I always find that so interesting. And I want to tie that into other forms of divination. For instance, tarot reading. When we say this is not, we're not reading the future because the future is not written yet. 
The future it can always change, and that is something that we need to remind ourselves all the time and remind our clients as well, or our friends, whoever we're reading for as well, that we are not telling you what is going to happen. We might be telling you what may happen if. On your hands, the line in your hands are very strong evidence of that. So no matter what kind of divination we're talking about, that is, uh, I think that ties in very, very well. Um, Another thing I another thing I wanted to say was it was quite interesting because um, my one daughter was here last weekend with her family for for dinner and my husband was giving a guitar lesson to my son-in-law and he was commenting oh his hands were hurting because his hands you know of course he was developing calluses on his hands and his fingertips and oh we were commenting his hands were softer than a baby's bottom they were completely I don't, they looked like he had never done anything in his, in his life. And I even said, your hands look like you've never done a lick of work in your life. And of course, my daughter-in-law said, my daughter said, oh, well, he doesn't have to. Well, that's very fine and good that he doesn't have to. But most of us do work, I don't think, because we have to. I think a lot of us really enjoy using our hands for things. I couldn't help but notice the contrast between my husband, who uses his hands for everything. He's a musician, but he's a... He's a chicken farmer. He's a, he remodels the house. He works. He uh, maintains a warehouse. He, he does all kinds of things with hands. He's a cook. <laughs> um, and, you know, his hands are, ref are reflected. And I've always been very interested in hands for that reason. I think witches, for, in general, are interested in people's hands because we know, just like a cook knows, your hands are your greatest tool. And in magic, that is really the case. Your hands are your greatest tool. So I just wanted to really include palmistry on my, in my answer here, in my response, because I think um, if you do not study palmistry, this might be a really good time for you to just look into it. It's very interesting. Maybe just to see, you know, check out the lines in your own hand and, and see how they change over the years. I will do a video on that and just share with you what I do know. It's not a lot, but it, it's something. It's, I know something. <laughs> I know some things. Okay. Excuse me. Gonna have a little sip here. It being Saturday, I'm enjoying a little bit of a Bloody Mary. <laughs> it's actually a dirty Bloody Mary, if you know what that means. It's very delicious with garlic, olives, and... Mm. Okay. The second kind of divination I want to say, I don't want to make this long. The second kind of divination that I want to talk about is runes. And I um, have my runes here. Again, this is, and I have my runes with cat hair all over the bag. Suspicious. <laughs> um, runes is not something that I use a lot, but runes is something I'm terrifically interested in. You know, I'm interested in history. Um, and uh, we did have a... Another group on Facebook, it's still there, I think, something about runes. Um, a couple years ago, it was started, and we were studying runes, each rune, every week we would study a new rune. And I really liked that. That was really nice. Now, runes um, are not read the same. I mean, you, you call it's called a casting when you uh, cast, and everybody knows what runes are. These runes I happen to have are clay. They're fired clay, and the, I don't even know if you can see the symbols on them. Oh, I don't know, because they're just really, they're just really scratched, scratched into it, rather than they're not painted on or anything. There, you might be able to see it. They're, they're inscribed into the clay before it was fired. And um, these are really not red like a tarot deck, a tarot spread would be red, because it, at least I don't read them that way. Um, they're a little bit different. They're thought they were, of course, based on an alphabet, very old, and um, the symbols. Each symbol really has a definitive meaning. It, uh, they're not. Um, it's not quite as, uh, you know, when you read a tarot spread, it can be interpreted in a lot of different ways. Runes really are pretty straightforward. How they're read. They're usually not read in a big spread like tarot, like a Celtic cross or something. They're usually read, you know, one at a time, maybe two, maybe three. Um, but really not much, not commonly much more than that. Again, I will do another video on those in the future. What I know, I don't know a lot. 
But um, I started to, when I was thinking about the runes, I was starting to think about, um, could you say that I use the runes like other people use uh, oracle cards? Because I really don't use oracle cards much with my, some people read oracle cards on their own. Some people add an oracle card to their um, tarot spread with their tarot uh, cards. I don't really do that. I did look it up. I did look it up trying to see is there a difference or not and one thing I came across I came across something that said um, where an oracle deck reveals an internal journey that you're taking in order to um, make your desires your external desires come true to to obtain those desires a uh, rune is more like a communication it's it's the mysteries of the gods or mysteries of the universe some kind of a um, knowledge, esoteric knowledge that we are um, receiving when we read the runes. And so it's a little different where the oracle cards, you play a really big important part into it. It's part of you, how you, just like in general, how you are um, affected or whatever by the cards, expressed by the cards, something about you. The, the runes really have more to do with something that is being told something is being told to you, I think. That's just was what one person said. Now, everybody, of course, is going to differ on that opinion. But anyway, that was interesting. Anyway, I will do a video on that. Um, they're kind of cool. Um, but they're not really my go-to my go -to form of divination. Of course, my go-to form of divination would be uh, tarot deck, tarot cards. And I've got all kinds of tarot cards, like we do. Um... Now, I have to say, I, I, um, I'm becoming really surprised, if I want to say. I'm a little surprised at how, you know, let me back up a little bit. You know, I'm, I'm a tarot reader, and I recently am working really hard on a new website and, and, uh, and really trying to go out there and do some professional reading and things like that. And of course, I read from my friends, whatever, share, because I'm very, very, um, and I'm very excited, you know, tarot deck with the idea of tarot for people. As an empath, let me put it to you this way, as an empath, I know, I can feel there are so many energies around us all the time. I mean, I think we all know that. As if you're an empath, you really feel that you know that they're there. You might not know what the energies are, but you really have a sense of them being around you. A tarot reading is a really good way to identify those energies. And in that, for that reason, I'm not. I'm surprised at how few people are really interested in tarot cards. You would think everybody would be carrying tarot cards around and wanting to know what's going on around them. Right. Um, we're not actually. Excuse me, while we're having a little bit from the ice cream truck. I live in a cul-de-sac, so he had to make his round around the cul-de-sac, and it gets pretty loud. Anyway, what I was saying was. Um, You would think that people would be more excited than they are about identifying the energies around them. You know, when we're reading tarot, a lot of people say, when you offer them a tarot reading, they go, they don't believe in divination or they, because they're, they think that we're trying to predict a future. You know, I have a friend who's very religious and she, she didn't like that I was reading cards until she actually heard me do a reading for somebody and she said, you know, that was interesting because I don't, you don't actually, you don't actually, you're not actually doing what she considered to be divination, what she considered to be um, wrong. Um, she could see that I was really trying to help, that I was really trying to guide the, the querent, the person I was reading for, into being able to understand what was going on around them and to make good decisions based on what they knew, what they were learning from the spread. You know, for instance, was there somebody around them that was... Um, 
that they didn't notice that they were, that maybe somebody who could help them with a certain issue or really influence them and they didn't know it. Or maybe um, somebody that was, um, maybe had to hurt them, maybe somebody who was competing them with them, they didn't realize it, okay? It's a good way of, you know, if you don't things really clearly, you don't have it. You don't really have much of a chance. Sometimes you, you don't know how, what kind of decisions to make if you don't get all the evidence. The tarot deck, the tarot reading can help you get that evidence. Can give you more information. Okay, it can tell you things like from the past. Like, why do we care about the past? Well, if something shows up in a tarot reading from your past, it's telling you something that you have either you still have some baggage from something that you haven't you haven't abandoned something that you think you know, should have been left in the past, but you still carried it around for some reason, or perhaps there's, it's reminding you of a lesson that you learned in the past that you're forgetting. Oh, wait, I need to remember what happened to me, such and such, at this time, because that really, that really is going to influence, that should influence my behavior right now. That lesson that I learned, I need to remember, right? Um, are we repeating something? Are we repeating old patterns? That's important to know. It's important to be reminded. We can't be expected to remember all those things. So these energies around us are there trying to help us out. And the tarot cards are, are something that can read those energies for us. Okay. In the future, it's not necessarily this is going to happen to you in the future. Okay. That's really not what it's about. It's because we have free will. We all have free will. And we cannot doubt that we don't have free will. It can change at any moment. You know, just because I have a lines in my hands, or just because there's a card down here on a tarot spread, or just because I pull a certain, certain rune out of a bag, does not mean that I'm doomed and tomorrow I'm going to be run over by a bus. No, it doesn't. It might be warning me that there's a, there's a bus out there and I need to really pay attention. I need to pay attention and not be texting while I'm crossing the street, or not be listening to my headphones. While I'm jogging, I need to be hearing the toot of the sound of a horn. Okay. I need to be looking up and seeing what's around me. If I don't, I might get run over by a bus. That's what it is. It's just telling you that if you keep on your present path, this is a possibility. I think on divination, no matter what kind you use, that's really the key. It's it's there to help you. If we had no choice, if we had no um free will. If we didn't have any heart, if it tomorrow didn't matter what happens, we're going to be struck by lightning tomorrow no matter what. Why would we care? Why would we care? We wouldn't care at all, right? So, any kind is, um, I think it applies to any kind of divination. I know there's a lot of other kinds, and I think the more you learn, I think the reason I'm so interested, I'm starting, excuse me, I pay attention to my palms. I pay attention maybe to the runes. You know, I drink, my husband and I drink tea all the time. And I've really never tried to read tea leaves. Maybe once or twice I fooling around did. But usually we're pulling the um, tea leaves out of our, out of our tea, right? Um, so I think, you know, that would be something to look into. Um, I don't really do much work with a pendulum. I'd like to try to work with a pendulum. Um, the more that you learn about it, the more it is. Whatever you can read, people that use spirit boards are very dedicated to the spirit boards because that's the way the energies are being known to main main. <laughs> what can I talk? That's the way the energies are being made known to them. That is the messages coming through their spirit board, through the pendulum, through the tea leaves, through the the runes, through the whatever it is, through the tarot cards. So it's only natural when you start to get into one kind, you kind of you know you kind of get interested in others. But at the same time, we're talking about the same thing. We still have free will, right? And uh, we're, we're using it not for entertaining purposes. I mean, it's entertaining, but that's not why we do it, you know. Some of it is, but most of it is not. You know, I did say, oh, I do have to say, I clarified. I did a, um, I do a, a weekly, my last video talked about a weekly tarot scope that I do. And those, when you put them out, and you put them out based on a sun sign, what is your week going to happen ahead of you? What do you have coming up in your week? Okay, that's a form of divination, but that's really more for entertainment purposes because if you just read your sun sign, it, it it's not going to be 
necessarily that accurate, but if you read, like if you saw my last video and you read um, your big three, you, you find out what your moon sign is, what your sun it is, and you read for all three. Now we're getting closer to the energies around you. Now we're getting to things that same as it would be as if, as if I was doing a three card draw. Okay, it's giving me a better picture, something closer to the energies. Okay, so those were the, the you know, you real general, real general things have to be more for entertainment purposes, but the more specific you get, and the more you specific, the closer you tune in to those, can tune in on what those energies are. Now we're talking about an accurate, an accurate form of divination, which I very, very wholeheartedly believe in. Anyway, I didn't want to get long, so I want to say I'm looking forward to seeing what everybody else has to say on the subject. Thank you for watching. I am Rebecca, and I wish you blessings. Cheers. Yum, yum, yum.